Hey you guys, Manny Gomez with News by Muse coming to you from Los Angeles at the beautiful LA Convention Center where LA Comic Con is in full effect. Behind me you can see cosplayers, you can see very excited fans getting ready to take photos, get autographs, meet some of the favorite creators and all in all have a good time. This weekend was the return of the annual LA Comic Con. With hundreds of panels and programming through the three days, there's something for everyone regardless of your fandom in TV, movies, anime, comics and so much more. The show featured the stars of some of your favorite franchises like Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, and Doctor Who. And you not only had the opportunity to hear from them on the main stage, but also interact with them through photo ops and signings. Fans were also able to interact with the foundation of many of these properties by meeting their creators in comics at Artist Alley. And of course, there were over 800 vendors and artists selling comics, collectibles, art, toys, apparel, and so much more. I spoke with Chris Demulian, CEO of Los Angeles Comic Con parent company CEI, about what makes this show in specific so special. This year we tried really hard to have three different kinds of entertainment. We had really classic stuff like Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter, uh, The Office on TV, SpongeBob SquarePants, you know, those are stuff, we, that's stuff that we've either had before or it's just they're the core, core, core fandoms. And then we wanted to have new stuff, so stuff like Ahsoka and uh, One Piece and The Boys, um, because that's what's going on right now, and we want to make sure that those fans come in as well. And then the third piece is we really always try to mix in uh, LA specific stuff. So like last night we had a we had like a variety party on the main stage that was sponsored by K Rock, and they had music and they had comedians and they had voice actors and just super super fun couple of hours. LA is such a mashup of every kind of entertainment. We have you know whether it's movies or it's television or it's streaming or music or video games, and we want to have all of that represented. But it's also sports and neighborhoods and people, and so I think it's really important. We try to create a very eclectic mix of stuff so that that whatever your stripe of fandom is if you come here you'll find something that you loved as a kid something that resonates with you and hopefully you know also turn a corner at some point on the show floor and see something you've never seen before and go holy cow that's super cool i'm now i can be a fan of that la comic con will be saying goodbye to december and return to its original pre-pandemic slot in october in 2024 on the 4th through the 6th also at la comic con for the first time ever, Wild Brain Strawberry Shortcake was at the show. Since her debuted in 1979, Strawberry Shortcake has been beloved by fans in her variety of versions. At the show, fans were able to see new Strawberry Shortcake inspired artwork by famed artist Kimmy Spooksibu Perez and get their hands on exclusive merch. We spoke with Perez about how excited she was about being part of the legacy of Strawberry Shortcake. I tend to work with brands that I'm genuinely passionate about and Strawberry Shortcake is one of those characters that not only am I familiar with but my mom it's a character that she grew up with too in Mexico and she know she knows her by the name Rosita Fresita so I just thought like having this opportunity was like so cute and fun um, the first piece that I did with Strawberry Shortcake was actually inspired by the original Strawberry Shortcake character which is my favorite <laughs> the classic fans of Strawberry Shortcake need to make sure and keep up with their social media pages and website as they get ready to celebrate 45 years in 2024. For the full interviews from LA Comic Con, visit our website and YouTube page per usual. Hi, this is Michael Sandoval with News by Muse, and we are here at the Biltmore Hotel in downtown Los Angeles, where we are at the 38th Annual Mahan Awards. We look forward to talking with everybody here on the red carpet, so stay tuned. Look at all the talent we have today. Look at all the films we have. Look at all of the directors and storytellers that we have. We need our community to champion these things so that we are on the radar of award seasons and, and other things that really open the doors for opportunity. It's an honor, you know, to kind of be recognized by my peers and by the people in the uh, Latinos in the industry. Uh, I'm real excited to be here to represent Flamin' Hot, and, and um, it's it's kind of a culmination of 23 years in the industry and things that you know. It's it's it's, uh, it's an honor to be here. I'm so excited and so grateful at how well received the project has been. I mean, Eva Longoria did a phenomenal job. The whole cast, Jesse Garcia, Linda Yvette Chavez, um, um, Devon Franklin. You know, everybody really put their heart and soul into this project and I think that's why we're getting the results that we're seeing now and it makes me really happy. I've seen a lot of familiar faces, a bunch of my friends, uh, you know the work that the Imagen Foundation does to support us and Latinos in our industry is really wonderful so uh, I'm very proud. Anytime I'm around my community watching everybody grow and succeed and 
create space for one another and uplift one another. It just, that's the energy I love to be around. And so you can feel it in the air. It's delicious. We had a great time talking to everybody at the Amahan Awards. Manny, back to you at the studio. In box office news this week, we find the Queen Bee ruling the box office. Renaissance of film by Beyonce on top with $21 million at the U.S. box office. Not accounting for inflation, this is the first time a film has opened over $20 million on this specific weekend since 2003's The Last Samurai. That's 20 years ago. And in second place, Lionsgate Hunger Games, The Ballad of Song, Bird, and Snakes with $14.5 million, giving its domestic grand total of $121 million. The film in third place surprised many. Toho's Godzilla Minus One finally roared into North American box office with $11 million. It's the biggest opening for a foreign film in the U.S. this year. The film cost $15 million to produce and has already made $23 million in Japan. Another surprise is Trolls Band Together from DreamWorks Animation brought in an additional $7.6 million for a three-week domestic total of almost $75 million and giving it the fourth place title. And in fifth place, Disney Animation's Wish in its second week, made $7.4 million for a total of $81.6 million at the box office. Have you had enough Godzilla this year? Of course you haven't. Luckily, we got our first trailer for Godzilla x Kong, The New Empire, directed by Adam Wingard, starring Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, and Kaylee Hoddle. According to Warner Brothers, Kong and Godzilla will have to join forces to take down a colossal, undiscovered threat hidden under our world that will challenge not only their existence, but our very own. Godzilla, X-Kong, The New Empire is set to hit theaters next April 12th. We're in the middle of the South Hall where it's all happening. You have booths, you have autographs happening, creators are meeting each other. Oh shit, sorry man. <laughs> and even some important people coming through. Behind me also is the main stage where you have some of the cast of Harry Potter. A little bit of everything here. From Los Angeles, Manny Gomez.